Last Man in episode 26th, coming at you straight from Cameron's dining room table. Yeah, with... no Dan again. No. So when no Dan, that means we record elsewhere, which is my house. Uh, we're in... Co- there's contract disputes between us and Dan right now, so he's taking, taking a leave of absence. Hiatus. Uh, a hi- no. Yeah. He's dem- yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of demands in his contract it's... that we don't want to meet. Yeah. Two and a half hour long episodes. 35 minutes on just Matthew Perot. On just Matthew Perot. It's unbelievable. Uh, he, he demands no more Flyers or Leaf Talks. So, yeah. We there, can't do that. There's shit going down in those two cities that we have to talk about. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm wearing my Giroud jersey right now, and I'm certain that Greg has the Leafs right in, right in his heart. Right in your heart. Well, like, I have Canada in my heart, and they just seem to share the same logo. So... That, is that what you're a Leafs fan, or did you just... No, I'm a Leaf fan because of my brother. Oh, because your brother's a Leaf well, fan. Well, how's he a Leaf fan? I'm pretty sure a lot of it stems from my grandpa. Okay. Um, because it's just my grandpa was a huge hockey person. Like he mm-hmm. taught various people in the Winnipeg area how to skate. Namely, not John the Tapes. Oh. Okay, I thought you were reading it. I was like, are we gonna? <laughs> no, I don't really know. Uh, in his later years, because he had he suffered from dementia, I'm gonna try to make this up. He told me how he coached Wayne Gretzky and taught him everything he knew. And I found I that to it. be hilarious. Hey, even though that he had to mention, weird but, fact about yeah. Wayne Gretzky. You okay. go into it. No, Wait, do you know? No, I don't. You didn't hear? Paulina Gretzky and Dustin mm. Johnson gave birth to a child, and Randy Turner tweeted it, and wheeling problems stolen. Randy Turner said, uh, "This uh, the kid's eligible for um, uh, draft in like twenty. What's eighteen years from today? Fourteen plus eighteen. You mean?" 15 plus 18, so it's like 2033. 2033, he tweeted, I know what the Oilers are up to. <laughs> but Real and, Pro- Real and Problem stole it and said, I know what the Leafs are up to, but go Winnipeg boy. Well, at least based in Winnipeg, Randy Turner done tweeted that first. So um, I think it stems from yeah. him because a lot of, like, even when my parents would go out of town and stuff, like we would always stay there. And my grandpa actually... My my dad was working a lot. And my mom was working a lot when my brother was younger, so we'd spent a lot of time there. And my, if it was like Saturday night, the Leafs would be on. That's what my brother would watch. So I think that's how he became a Leaf fan. Was that way? I became a Leaf fan because I looked up to him, and that was what was on TV. And I got a lot of his hand me downs, which was Leaf stuff. So that's what I did, and that's how I became a Leaf fan. That's awesome. And it's it's awful. We will t- talk about the Leafs uh, this episode. So we'll we'll talk about the Jets. We'll talk about uh, the fact that the stadium or the Heritage Classic that was meant to co- go uh, be here next year is actually postponed another year. Uh, we'll talk about um, some All Star Game stuff, the Winter Classic between potentially Boston, Montreal, um, at Gillette Stadium, at Gillette Stadium, sixty-eight thousand. The people. new stadium series that got announced minutes before this podcast started mm-hmm. between Colorado and Minnesota for next year. Uh, we'll talk about the pe- Pens and Flyers game last night. Talk about what's wrong with the Leafs. We'll Go to our hashtag trade bait board. Trade bait board. Yeah, okay. we'll we'll talk some trade stuff. Uh, the McEichel Finn watch. McEichel Finn the, watch. The hashtag McEichel Finn watch mm-hmm. is formerly known as the McDavid watch twenty fifteen. Exactly. Uh, so we'll talk about that. And last but certainly not least, we have a special treat for you guys: an All Star draft. Me versus Cameron. Team Taves versus Team Felino. Scorino. It's Scorino. Okay. So without f- further ado, let's get into the Jets news for this week. Uh, since last podcast, they've played three times. They are currently playing Columbus right now as we speak. Actually, the game starts in roughly four minutes. Stacey Nantris is getting ready to sing that old Canada You're loud and proud. Darn um, so, Jets played against the Stars, uh, I think it was last Thursday. They won 2-1. Pavlik stopped 45. Maybe his best game as a Jet. Which, That's what everyone was saying. I didn't watch. Yeah. I was at a concert, but I, no. Did you watch? I, I I saw bits and pieces of it. He played really well. Uh, Jets did not deserve this game. That was probably the worst outing they've played all year. Oh, was, to win, they didn't deserve the game. No, they didn't deserve to win the game. But that was probably as a team their worst game of the year. Oh, real. Um, which kind of leads me into my next thing. Which they came out and they had to play the Hawks and Stars back to back nights. Which in past years would have been. Terrible. Even this year, it's it's a tough stretch. Plus, that travel isn't really easy. But they came out and just absolutely dominated the Hawks again. 3-0 this season that 
in Chicago. No other team, no other team will do that. That's the first uh, first team to win three in Chicago since 06 07, which is quite a long time. They're also won their last four in Chicago. Wow, that's ridiculous. Dating back to last year, which, yeah, when you think about it. Um, oh, and just because we're on the Hawks, Hutchinson has played the last three since he played the Hawks. He stopped 102 out of 105 shots faced against the Hawks. Yeah, in so those three games. goals against this year. There was that number one thing that the Jets needed to do this year to make the playoffs was beat teams in their own division. Well, they beat the Stars, and then they beat the Hawks. They went two for two this week, both games on the road. And even dating back to the first year, a lot of people said that if we were a better road team, we would have made the playoffs. They've got an unbelievable road record this year, and this just goes to show once again that they're they're able to do it. So They are able to do it, but the downside, sure, they have the Hawks number, but they only have one win against the California Three this year. Yep. And they struggle mightily against Nashville and St. Louis. Mm-hmm. It almost seems... But after the Hawks game, it was a lot of the guys in the room said the intimidation factor with the Hawks is gone for them now. Maybe it still remains with Nashville and St. Louis in terms of maybe not the intimidation of Nashville, but that the fact that maybe Pekka Rene gets in their mind yeah. a little bit. Well, like We, we don't play last... Pekka all the time when we play them, no. though. But they, they're, Pekka Rene is one hell of a goalie, although he's out now. Three so to five weeks. With but, a knee injury, yeah. Um... Exactly, and that's one of the th- things they noted was that if you look at our second half of our schedule, actually from All-Star break on, we play a lot of Western Conference teams. We'll be playing the Vancouver Canucks, the Oilers, and the Flames, which are all teams that we need to beat to those make the playoffs. Those are beatable teams. Too. Very... We're ahead of those teams, and we have to stay ahead of those exactly. teams. Exactly. I don't think th- the only team that could I... realistically catch us would maybe be the Canucks, and that's if we go well, on the like, side, I guess. The Canucks, the Kings, and the Flames are all there right near us. Um, they're they're all potential, but they're also fighting for those those Pacific Division spots because right now it's just Anaheim and San Jose, and even then San Jose is not really there, so it's just Anaheim, and then it's like a four team free for all for those last two spots. Um, and for us, it's a little bit different because you know you have Nashville at the top of their game, St. Louis, as well as Chicago. Um, so there isn't really room for us to make it in the division, even though we're tied with Chicago. Uh, I believe as of right now, it's um, they still have a couple games in hand, so it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. We could be we could make the uh, playoffs According. very interesting. However, after the during this game, um, Bob McKenzie tweeted, "Winnipeg, comma Chicago, more please," because it was such an entertaining game to watch. Hits everywhere. This would be a fantastic playoff series. However. That game was also amped up because what happened in that game, Greg, that I'm assuming we're going to talk about. I, I, what, Jets scored four goals? I don't no. know. Is there, is there like a big talking point from this game? Um, I wouldn't know. No, no, there's no way. I don't think living in Winnipeg is pretty quiet this week. Yeah, like there's no hate for a certain player at all. A certain player by the nickname of Carbomb, <laughs> Daniel Carcillo, oh, decided so. to, uh, uh, I don't even know what was on his mind when when he decided to do this. But Daniel Carcillo in the second period, uh, who is Perot being chased by? He's being chased by someone, lost his stick, standing by the puck for maybe, you could count three seconds. Like, not Mississippi's like, one, one thousand, two, that's it. Yeah. And then Daniel Carcillo skated up and gave him uh, the hardest cross track I've seen someone give without a guy holding a stick or anything towards Matthew Perot's left elbow. And it... On the video, it looks like it's broken. I'll tweet a Vine video of, like, one that I found where you can hear the people who made the Vine like, oh, yeah, that's where it's broken. It's not broken. Matthew Perot isn't broken. They said it's a torn... <laughs> He's not broken. Actually, the, the confirmation has not been... It's not out yet. Oh, They okay. placed him on an IR today, and it says undisclosed injury still. Oh. So they haven't disclosed it. But, okay, well, uh, allegedly it was a torn ligament in his elbow, which could take uh, upwards anywhere of 10 from, weeks. Upwards of 10 weeks, anywhere from minimum should be four weeks. That looked vicious. But the thing, the thing is, too, is it could be one of those um, undisclosed injuries because originally what they said is they didn't want to release any information about it before the Carcillo hearing, um, which he was suspended six games, which is 16% of the season from this point on. Um which some people argue that it wasn't long enough. Some people argue because he has a history. But even with his history of nine suspensions and three fines, you're suspending a guy for sixteen percent of the season. If you do that at the beginning of the year, I believe you have to suspend him for around twelve games. 
or so. Oh, like 16% left in a yeah. season. Like, no, 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 no. Like, so if you take every game from this point forward, that's for, okay, so I took it from, I believe they have 35 games left, so six of that is 12, 16%. Or whatever it was. Oh, yeah. okay, wow. So he's missing that much more of the season. So it's like missing 15 games at the start of the year. That's, that's how that's it That's the equivalent? It's something like that. I can't exactly That's remember. crazy. Yeah. Well, okay. What I'll he did was malicious. But the one thing... Okay. The, I, I'm not defending Daniel Carcillo at all. But you have to be aware... It's that, equal to 13 games in the, uh, at the start of the season. Okay. So, but you have to be aware that... Okay, Daniel Carcillo is crazy. Everyone, he see, there's a reason his nickname's Car Bomb. You don't yeah. know what's going to happen. Like, kind of an off, off tasteful, a very distasteful nickname because Car Bombs are terrible to anyone that has to ever run into them or deal with them. I haven't, thank God. But it's just, it, it sucks that he was standing, okay, this is what I'm trying to say. He's standing by the puck without a stick with his back turned to. Not knowing that a player, maybe he knew that a player of Daniel Carcillo's stature is on the ice. You can't expect him not to do anything. Like, I thought he was maybe going to get hit. But then, because I wasn't watching the game. And then you just, oh, then like, the, the Twitter exploded, basically. Yeah, no, it really did. And everyone was like, oh, kill, kill Carcillo, doesn't deserve to be in the league. Yes, I understand. I agree with that. Maybe he doesn't deserve to be in the league. But here's but- a counter argument. Any publicity is good publicity. And guess what? That made national news. That made ESPN. People were talking about it. Oh, exactly. But here's the other thing is, you think that's bad? Go watch the 70s Broad Street Bully Flyers. That happened every day. Yeah. Or <laughs> like less padding. Last night. We'll lead into that we'll, later. We'll talk about but, that. Oh, my but goodness. <laughs> that, honestly, that is probably how Carcillo learned to play hockey was he watched that kind of hockey. He that's looks like he's a 70s rocker. Have yeah. you seen him? Yeah, exactly. Have you seen him? Um, moving on, yep. obviously. So Carcillo suspended six games. We're still unsure how long Pearl will be out. Um, Jets play the Coyotes. One in a shootout. However, they play Pavlik again in this game. A lot of people... Anytime it seems Pavlik plays, they always blame him. The players don't play as well. In no, front of Pavlik. no, they really don't. You can see. Like, yeah, it like sucks. I said, the Stars game where he played, they played terrible, and then they give. It's like they give up in the third period because they're up three one in this game, and they just stop playing. And boom, how do you? What do you guess? It's three three all of a sudden, and luckily they went in a shootout. And this has kind of been the trend even last week. You saw it. They lost leads against LA and Anaheim, and they do it again against the Coyotes. It. it if you're going to be successful in the play, uh, to get to the playoffs, you have to be able to... Hold on to a lead? Exactly. Well, also another thing is, as we've talked about multiple occasions, they lead the league in penalties, mm-hmm. and they get into penalty trouble, yep. and then they start losing, and then that's where they give up like power play goals or just even just goals when they're frustrated and taking these penalties because they're blowing the lead. And uh, just during this game... Uh, Blake Wheeler played his 500th NHL game. Different. And did you watch this game at all? No, I was playing. Oh, we suck at this. <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't watch it either. Watch the games! Somewhere in this game, Mikel Bodker got hit, and then I don't know if he left the game, but he got injured. Right after the game, he left and went to the hospital and had his spleen removed. Ooh. What? <laughs> I know. So I don't know if he came back in the wait, game. Wait, wait. It's a good old was hockey that? kid. Did he get his spleen removed in Canada? Like in Winnipeg? I believe so. That's I, some good I, Canadian health care right there. Yeah, I think it was here at least because I'm pretty sure they're on a road swing. But don't quote me on it, but I wouldn't want to travel with a r- spleen. No, ruptured spleen. No, neither yeah. right. No um, so after this league, Dustin Buffum named first star of the NHL. Of the week? Of the week, yeah. Okay. First time we've had... Really? I think so, yeah. Matthew Perot didn't get it? No. I guess that's one game though, I mean. like he, But he was playing well. Like He was turning heads, but... It's all about that consistency over that week of playing really well, which he's yeah. done. Uh, Cam and I saw something that both made us sigh very hard this week yeah, on Twitter. Um, currently, the Jets are on pace for 100 points, which is their highest point total since coming to Winnipeg. I think it's the highest franchise point total. Isn't so, it 97? Maybe. Or 96? Yeah, maybe. It's got to be up there. So, we'll find they're out. on pace for 100.7 points before tonight's game. But we saw something on Twitter, and... Not to directly quote it, but one of the people that both Cam and I follow said... Well, uh, we follow a lot of Winnipeg Jets people. Yeah. Well, we're Winnipeg Jets podcast. We should. Yeah, of course. We, we live here. Yeah. We should. Gotta um, support the city. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Gotta support the local guys. Um, 
He said, how long until we talk about the Jets being a cup contender seriously? And this is, okay, before, I don't know if you have something to say, but I'll, I'll wrap mine up first. Okay, cup contenders are usually mean you make the playoffs con- guy consecutively for multiple years, and you make progress each year. And that means you're a contender, you're, always, you're in the upper echelon of, I would say, six teams that are always in the conversation. I guess now we're on the tail end of these teams, but we can argue, okay, Pittsburgh, Chicago, Boston, L.A., Anaheim's usually up there, even though they haven't done too much damage in the playoffs lately. You could say New York's in there, especially New York with the way Rangers. they're playing right uh, now. Montreal, even. Yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. the teams that have their main core and they're growing and younger. Not that we don't have a core, but Stanley Cup. That means you would have to make the playoffs first off. Yeah. The Jets we have, have not made we the have, playoffs. We're in a playoff spot, oh, and but that, we're not there yet. That <laughs> also means that your franchise should probably have a playoff win, yep. which they do not yep. yet. Mm-hmm. Of course... Uh, where I stand, it's a little outlandish to think like that right now. I'd give it three years of consecutively making playoffs and whether I would say three years and I'm going to give it three years, four playoff round wins, four playoff series wins, whether they get knocked out this year, win two, lose or win next year, then lose and then win two. I would say you would at least have to make playoffs three consecutive years in a row and make at least do some damage every year that you're in there. Agreed. That's my thoughts. Um, to answer this question, how long is it going to take till we're seriously considered a cup contender? A while. I'm not going to put a timestamp on it because I don't think we've seen that yet because you never know with the NHL, with injuries, with anything like that. It's so hard. It's like a variable. You just never really know. Um I don't think it's at all realistic to say this year they can contend with the Cup. Just because, I think we mentioned it last week, when you take the LA's, the Chicago's, the Boston's, the the New York Rangers, the Montreal Canadiens, they know how to play playoff hockey, and they know to they turn on a switch, and they're a different team, and they know how to play that way. So it's about experience. Sure, we have guys who have experience, but we have to continue to grow, and I don't think... Very few teams make the playoffs one year and win the cup, and then that's that's that. It's it's very rare, and I don't think this is the group. I'm not saying the group isn't good enough. I'm saying it's going to take a little bit, and sometimes you have to bite the bullet and pay your dues to make it all the way to the cup. The one thing I don't want to see this team do is go the way of other teams where they make the playoffs one year, and then they regress and regress and regress. Or they even, like, that that when that team makes the playoffs – during that season leading up to the playoffs in the position, like, say, that the Jets are in, where they forego giving up either a high pick or a highly touted prospect for some for that veteran that might exactly. give you that extra push. Yeah. I'm not prepared to make that move, and the Jets shouldn't be able to no, make... The Jets I, shouldn't be prepared to make that move either. As I, we have discussed off podcast, um, they shouldn't look at giving away a first to a third round pick for anybody. No, for, you fourth keep or higher. Those. But I'm going to say I'm okay if they give up a third rounder. I understand that if you look at our history of drafting, we've done a really good job with our third round picks with Nicholas Patan um, being one of them. But regardless, I, I'm i okay if they were to give up a third round pick to get a roster guy for this year, but it has to be a loner and it cannot be a permanent guy because you have young guys that are going to be coming up in the next couple of years that you don't want bad contracts sticking to older guys. Um, so I, I think it's outlandish to say that we're going to be cup contenders this year. Playoff contenders, yes, I think we'll be in the conversation, but I'll be happy if we go to six games in our first series. I'll be really happy if we win it, but I'm not expecting that from this group. I want them to pay their dues, learn a lot from making the playoffs, learn it from the experience, and go. But obviously nothing's for certain, especially considering the fact I'm a Leaf fan, so I know that. Uh, yeah. It's dating back to last year. This is the same position Toronto was in, and you saw where they finished up. Uh, quick note before we get into the last topic. Uh, Jacob Truba back tonight against Columbus. So good to know that we actually have our full core of D. Uh, so now it's time to see what they're going to do with the leftover guys, the parties, uh, <laughs> par- party, Postma, and I guess... 
Sherrod, because Quinn's on the IR for the rest of the year. Yeah, Sherrod or Harrison. Oh, and the only reason do. Perot was put on the IR was because they were at their max players of exactly. 23, 24. Mm-hmm. So they had to retro or they had to swap. The, essentially, yeah, that's yeah. exactly what they did. Mm-hmm. So the really disappointing thing, news that we heard yesterday, uh, the NHL and the Winnipeg Football Club couldn't reach a date for the Heritage Classic, so it's now been moved from early 2016 to 2017. Um, originally, what had happened is the NHL wanted to do a date in December, which didn't work for the Winnipeg Football Club because they're hosting the CFL Championship in November, and for some reason they and didn't. And it's the last weekend in November. It's the last weekend in November. Um, so they wanted to have it in December. Winnipeg didn't, uh, the football club here didn't want that. So they asked for February. They said no. And then the Bombers which is a football club here, said, okay, let's compromise, let's do January. NHL once again said no. It was pretty much December or nothing, which is kind of weird. But here's why. Here's the really interesting thing. The reason being that it was December or nothing is because the Bombers said to the NHL, you have to pay for all of our building, uh, for our building Like the being utility open. fees and maintenance fees until January or February? Until February. Until which is they what? Complain. How much would that be? I have no clue. But that's two months of the that's two months of utilities and stuff. Because they'd have to keep the arena open and that's why NHL did that. So it was selfish on the bombers side, and I can see the selfishness on the NHL side. I still don't understand why they can't um and maybe it's good that they'll move it back a year because let's be honest, the bombers probably won't be in the Great Cup in twenty seventeen or twenty sixteen, so um Okay, the way I want to say this is by moving it back, they can have the Heritage Classic in March, hopefully, and then just keep the stadium open from March all the way through till the following November in 2017. Oh, okay, yeah. Because I think that's better and the than having a game in December. Regardless when it is, I still want to go. But having a game in December when it's potentially minus 18 with a minus 30 wind chill, or in January when it could get up to minus 45, or in February where it's also cold... Marsh, you just have a better opportunity, higher probability of a chance of being a nice day. So I'm a little upset they didn't do that, but it's it's not one side is right, one side's wrong. Just both sides couldn't agree to it, which is kind of disappointing because we're looking forward to that. What's, That's going to be a great take? winter. Well, okay, my take, I'm a little bitter before the, before the Bombers just because I'm not the biggest Bomber fan, but this is how I, I took this, that big old NHO comes to town, CFL... They definitely, I don't think they lost business, but they're not the top dog. They used to be top dog. Ever since the Jets left, CFL is like the big dog, like yeah. realistically. So big old NHL, they want to have their Heritage Classic, but they're forced to bring little brother CFL and Grey Cup along. The reason, I definitely understand the CFL in terms of um, them not wanting the NHL to have in December because if I'm a business owner and the NHL, the Jets approach me and the Bombers approach me, but Bombers come first and say, hey, would you like to pay X amount and advertise at the Grey Cup? And two days later, the NHL walks in my door and says, hey, do you want to uh, do you want to uh, pay for advertisement for the Heritage Classic? Uh, this game's going to be nationally broadcasted across North America. CFL, it's basically just... Apart from, like, ESPN3, it's just in Canada. Yeah. Of course I'm taking the NHL. No question. But what you brought up, or I'm pretty... Someone... I, I might have been you. Too bad they couldn't, like, work together and say, Hey, instead of paying, like, X amount, we'll give you... You pay X and a half amount, not double X. Say X and a half, save a little bit of money, and advertise for both. Yeah. But, again, uh, the... I like that idea. Like, I, I'd rather have it in December, but I totally understand. Like, what, just me, but I'm, I'm being biased here. I'm almost certain. Uh, oh, man. Four fifth, four to five people will take an NHL Heritage Classic over the Grey Cup. Oh, yeah. Especially because the Grey Cup, as Dan, I was talking to him yesterday, he said, the Grey Cup is an unknown. Your team isn't guaranteed to be in it. Heritage. Your, your team's team guaranteed there. to be in it. You're going to see your team. Yeah. And they're going to play a rival, most likely. Um, I just want to clean it up with the final final thing before we move into the mailbag. Um, the Jets were either going to play the Wild, but it looked more like Edmonton, especially when you think about it. 
if McDavid or Eichel ends up on Edmonton, why wouldn't they put Edmonton in that stage, which we've talked about before? I think it would have been Winnipeg Edmonton in the Heritage Classic, especially considering that that's a rivalry that dates back to the old, I believe, Smythe Division era. Yep. So we would know we played him. Yeah, we played a we played a trivia game. This Greg, weekend. Greg and I this past weekend played a trivia cool. game, and it was like from the start of the NHL until 1986, 87. Uh, there's a lot of records, and you knew we knew there that there was going to be an automatic answer when guys like, um, Clant like King Clant or Coach Clancy or like yeah. Ted, Ted Lindsay yeah. or Red Kelly, like uh, guys that Mike Bossy, Mike Bossy or <laughs> Billy Smith. I wow. have notes on him. I have notes. Or, um, yeah, just guys like that that are awards now or like well known. That was the answer. It was yeah. fun, but sorry. Um, so we all thought a Minnesota game would be great. However, today it was announced or speculated that the stadium series, one of the stadium series games next year is going to be between Colorado and Minnesota. I believe in Colorado at Denver, at whatever their football stadium. Mile High right? Stadium. Mile High. Um, so in the mailbag today, mm-hmm. I want to talk or want to mention Fall Boys to perform at the All Star Game. It's awesome. Okay. Have you seen the jerseys? No. Yes. I tweeted about it. Yes, I like them. I, I like them big, too. I hope the numbers bold. are like neon. You know green. what? They're bold. And if the NHL wants to make a statement, they need bold jerseys. Yeah. Um, news that the 2016 Winter Classics between Boston and Montreal in Boston, Gillette Stadium. You mentioned that 60, earlier. 60,000 people. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That and you cool. know, um, are we on the All-Star? Are we talking all of it right now? We, we can mention some All-Star stuff. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, no. I'll wait. I'll wait. I was just going to say, uh, you know who is going to put asses in seats? Pardon my French. Go ahead. Um, P.K. Subban. Which... Yeah. Still baffling that he got left off oh, the exactly. All Star. I agree. Baffling. Sorry, um, I'll let you continue because we'll go into the All Star. The All Star game or the All Star weekend is going to be used as a catalyst to announce the 2015 or 16 World Cup. I 2016. Think. I have stuff on this. Okay, are we gonna talk about? Uh, we can just briefly run over because mm-hmm. we do have to do the draft, which might take yeah. some time. Um, so there's going to be eight teams. It's going to be Canada, Russia, Sweden, Finland, uh, USA, USA, Czech Republic, Czech Republic, and then a Super- selection. Super Europe. <laughs> uh, collection of European players that are not in those super... Which would be Slovakia, yeah. Swiss, Norway, Slovenia, and anyone in between. Belarus. Yeah. And then the final team is a North American under-23 under team. Which, okay, here's the thing. With the World Cup, I understand McDavid. you want to... you want Yeah, McDavid, McDavid uh, McKinnon, Jacob yeah. Truba, Seth Jones. Yeah. Here's the thing. If you're named to the under-23 team, as of what is said right now... You cannot play for the, your country. You have to play for the under-23 yeah. team. Else you do not play. Which, just put into perspective, Nathan McKinnon could arguably be the captain of this team because he'll still be under-23 at that time, which is frightening. But also, he could be a catalyst for Team Canada. But yeah. here's the argument. Is that say if he's named to Team Canada and not the under-23 team, it's not obviously he will be named to the under-23 team, but say he's named to Canada. He might just be a suit in a press box, you know? Because yeah. why Would you take Nathan McKinnon or would you take like Jamie Benn? You know what I mean? It's like... Are you going to take that experience or the young guys? Exactly. And what... Unfortunately, this is kind of the only crappy thing about this is... They mentioned it yesterday on Insider Trade on TSN how... Nathan McKinnon didn't dream as a kid wearing something that said U23 star. North American U23 star. He dreamt wearing a Team Canada jersey. Maple Leaf, yeah. All-star jerseys Um, and all that. Which obviously is disappointing. However... I think that this is one of those ones where these under-23 guys should bite the bullet and you just shouldn't be invited. I know it sounds bad, but why don't you let the under-23 team be guys that are just left off teams? So, like, the Trubas, the Seth Jones... Are you telling me Jacob Truba and Seth Jones wouldn't be named a team USA? I'm saying they would. However, oh. like, how cool would it be to just let them play with the under-23s? Oh, and that's that what they're USA saying, USA and though. Canada are only going to be picked from 24-year-olds and up. Oh, that's exactly what they're saying. Is that what they're going to do? Pr- I'm pretty sure that's what they mean. I, no, but like Nathan McKinnon can still be picked for Team Canada. Oh, the leftover guys. But then you're going to... There's all the best guys again. They're going to... Yeah. Why it's, wouldn't you take McKinnon and be like, no, you're on Team Canada, yeah. but you're going to sit in the box. That's not, I don't it's, like it. Here's what Elian Friedman... Like I read, okay. I read the article from Friedman. He said, if you're going to try this, why not do under 27 at the All-Star game? It's under 27s oh, versus cool. everyone else. Because then you could have Patrick Kane playing Jonathan Taves and guys like that. Or like Jake Voracek or Claude Giroux playing Jake Voracek. Yeah, that'd be neat. Um, and just another just quick quick announcement about that. The final. Did you hear about the final? It's going to be a best of three oh, series. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the, the NHL and NHLPA said it's a projected revenue of over $100 million. 
Uh, when when is it though? Is it going to be like in September? Like it'll be night? it'll be running from like September to early October apparently. So it might replace some preseason stuff. Another thing stuff. though that I'd be weary, and I don't like the under twenty three injuries. injuries in size, dude. Yeah. Cause... Yeah. No. No. You're definitely oh. right. Well, experience okay. is a lot. But think a about lot. this. Think about this. Shea Weber on the blue line, and he's going against like Nick Batan, who could potentially be on that team. I don't want. It. But like, here's the other test: is there'll be fringe guys that aren't in the NHL yet on this U23 team, most likely. Like guys like a Nicholas Batan, Nick like or an Ehlers won't be there, but like Nick Batan or. Um, Would they take because it's U23? Oh, North America. North America. Say but like. Right. So, Ehlers will probably be on that North America or the European leftover team. Mm-hmm. Um, God, that's terrible. Look at that. That's already like European leftovers. <laughs> but like, it'll be like Thomas Vanek and. Uh, have let's you just seen think of the team? captain. Uh, Marion Gabrick. Uh, captain Kopitar probably. Marion Hosa. Yeah. Who would be the ca- who would be the who would be the coach of the under twenty three? Who would be the coach of Europe? Europe would be cool to see uh, Kopitar's dad, who was a coach for Slovenia. Yeah. Um, U twenty three. You know what they should do for under twenty three? The winning coach of whoever has a better record at the World Juniors between oh, yeah. USA and Canada. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Two years, three years. What's another okay. three years? But like, it would be cool to see guys who are on the fringe of making the NHL or just starting their NHL careers go up against the big boys. And it could also be a test for a guy who is drafted that year. So a guy like uh, Noah Hannafin, if he's not there yet, or Jack Eichel, oh, or Connor McDavid in that. Going into his draft year. Going, not into his draft year, but going into his potential second year in the NHL to see how much it's growing, right? Oh, because yeah. instead of preseason, you have the World Cup of Hockey. That'll be really neat. So and just speaking cool. of uh, just under eight, under yeah. guys, USA under eighteen team celebrates Star Wars night with USA Han Solo jerseys. That's I would awesome. tweet a picture. They're so cool. Okay, uh, mm-hmm. let's talk about that Penn Slayers game last night. Let's talk about it. Let's talk Zach about Ronaldo. Life. What about the did white rhino? He, did you hear what he said? I did hear what he said. And he you know changed what? the game by hitting Chris Letang from behind. I agree. Today, okay. Chris okay. Letang is experiencing. Concussion leaks. I know undisclosed <laughs> injury. Oh, a late scratch to the game for the Pens was Malkin. A uh, Malkin, yeah, I saw which that. Which is weird. Yeah, very interesting. Um, let's just. Well, I got to sign my notes. This here. rivalry between Philadelphia and um, Pittsburgh parallel makes me. Well, you Come know, on. a couple years ago, Montreal, that Boston, Boston Montreal rivalry is pretty good. Okay, Boston, all, all original six, but outside original six. Oh, this is the best. The top top dog. This is yeah. maybe I'm being biased because I'm no, literally wearing no, a flag you know jersey right now. It's ex- it's special. You don't get these kinds of. They hate each other. Yeah, you saw the <laughs> NHL top scorer get hit and fight a guy. He instigated because he instigated and he had a visor on extra twelve minutes. He yeah. got uh, twelve minutes and then he got ten for fighting and then five uh, or no and then another four for misconduct That's or something. Awesome. It was on, but he had thirty pims. Just Voracek. <laughs> Oh, and, no, and that was the only... I had him in I fantasy. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, get him. Don't get him, Jakey. <laughs> you get him. Man. Uh, oh, yeah. So in total, there are 93 total penalty minutes. 66 in the second. And in the second period alone, there were four fights. Mm. Yeah. You know what? Can we just make an asterisk that they have to play each other every year in the playoffs? Even if they're shit. Everybody wants it. Everybody just wants get it. To everybody. You never know what you're going to get. We talked about it multiple times how there's like 10 2 games and then like 9 6. <laughs> and then all of two a sudden, guys get hat tricks. All of a sudden, Come it's on. like a 1 0 game the next game. What the fuck is what going just on? What happened? No. Uh, well, oh, Giroux, or as, as everyone in Penguins fan should, or Penguins line should now refer to him as the Penguin Killer. Oh, okay. He had his fourth game winning goal against the Pens. Some would argue it was a late whistle for, because. Did look like Flurry covered it, but you know what? They the refs let that game kind of get out of hand. No, oh, they did. Pens are depicted. Oh, they definitely. Def, def, uh, but as for Z- uh, J- Zach Ronaldo, yeah, what he said, his quote was, um, basically, he was interviewed after the game, and he's like, "Well, do you, they're like, oh, so did you jump?" And he's like, "Well, if you slow down and he hit, it's gonna look like I jumped. I was going fast, and the momentum carried me. I'm not. I don't want to defend Zach Ronaldo. I don't want to be for Zach Ronaldo." Zach Ronaldo jumped. I we've seen Zach Ronaldo. No, well, he also said that he changed the game with that hit. At the well, okay. Here's the argument: a light goes off. I know he knows the camera's on, but he like his tone even changes once that one light goes oh, off. Oh, really? Thinking that maybe the game is, um, thinking that maybe the camera's the off. But he's like, yeah, I changed. I changed the way he did. He did change that game. Mm-hmm. But he also understands he is going to get suspended. He got offered an in-person here and turned it down. The phone call uh, will be placed on Monday. So I guess live, give him a couple days of stew about it. Not really enjoy his all-star break off, I would say. I'd be thinking about it the whole time. 
Uh, because he was offered in person, I'm assuming it's going to be five or more. Five plus because yep. he's a repeat offender. But he also said himself, like, Latang's a star, and Latang now is out with the undisclosed injury. Mm-hmm. We, oh, Latang was instantly down. Like, that's a yeah. concussion. No, that yeah, is a definitely. 100% is. a concussion. Yep. Agreed. Um, stay on the. Uh, oh, oh, stay yeah. On the Flyers. But dating back to last year, the Flyers are now 6 0 against the Penguins. They have their number. They're in their head. They're basically good. the Jets to the Hawks, which again, division that's, all that's division good. rivals. You know, it's good to good to be able to beat your division. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> Leafs are three and thirteen in the last sixteen games. Beautiful. Is one and four mean? under Peter Horacek, or one and five now. I can't remember. They are having a rough time over there. They can't score. Can't defend their way out of a tube sock. They're having a tough time, but. If you're a Leaf fan, you're listening to this. There's some hope, and I'm giving you hope right now, because that's what I, I think Leaf fans need. And the hope comes in the shape of firing Dave Nonis. I'm not saying it's because Dave Nonis has done a bad job. I'm not saying it because Dave Nonis is a problem. I'm saying it because they need a total restructure of that team. They've just fired the coach, which is Randy Carlisle. They've just hired Brendan Shanahan, and they're getting a new CEO. So why not, like Leafs and uh, Sports and Entertainment are getting a new CEO, so why not change the entire face and get rid of Dave Nonis? Not that he's done a bad job. He's signed some bad contracts, in my opinion. Um, has definitely, I think, made the team worse in a sense, but who knows what Brian Burke would have done. I think it's time to get somebody else's opinion on there instead of somebody who was in the Anaheim Ducks slash... Um, Vancouver Canucks era, if you look, all their guys were from those two systems. Brian Burke, Randy Carlisle, Dave Nones, minus the Ducks. Now, right now, just regarding the Leafs, because the ownership group of the Leafs is Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. Who is the top dog there right now? They don't have one because Tim Wiki stepped down. Tim right? Wiki stepping down in June. And okay. The well, rumor yeah, here is go. Mark Cohan. A former C or a, a current going, CFL commissioner. Yeah, former. Uh, I think this year was his last year. So I think well, his his day's not up yet, is it? No, I don't think so. But when that's the when is he? Because, uh, when's his contract up? Because do you think that's the uh, first February. thing he does is step in and clean house, February. or at least know it? Um, don't I, clean house. I, I, I don't like think, Shanahan. Then. Here's the thing: is I think whoever's the next CEO, he's gonna take a di- different look, and I think he's gonna give a lot of suggestion towards what Brendan Shanahan has, has seen. It's got to be... I think it's Shanahan's team. I think the guys at Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment will be like, you're the hockey guy. You understand this. It's your... Like, this is your job. So, we'll, we'll kind of take a backseat to what you want to do. He's got Kyle Dubas there. He's got Cam Sherrod there. Guys who know analytics and understand how to maybe work this team and retool it. Um, they have assets there that they can definitely move. Um... I don't know if Phil Kessel's the guy to move, but there's definitely interest there where you could move him. Um, and I'm not saying get rid of Phil Kessel because he's the problem. I don't think he's the problem, but heck, he could be a solution to get a cornerstone core together and maybe get rid of him to get guys. Not a Max Domi character, but maybe go out and retool this team. Um, it's It's hard to say what you could do or what you would get for Phil Kessel, but... Um, lots of speculation out there what you could do I think fresh set of eyes on this team someone who hasn't really had a ton of, of you know experience might be their best option or maybe somebody who's in the CHL or AHL right now might work out for them um, for a GM for a GM well even look dating back to last year I believe it was where Columbus took the a big step for the NHL but just their franchise themselves where they brought in the first European GM in Jarmo Kekalainen. Mm-hmm. And it's already... Obviously, they, they were well, supposed to have the All-Star game years ago. That has nothing to do with it. But you can already tell an attitude change has happened yeah. in Columbus. I, and an I think, immense attitude change. And Exactly. And the other thing is, is that team is bad, but... But they don't play bad. They even go in no, going against guys like Chicago. They're like, yeah, so we're playing Chicago now. Let's do this. It's... If they didn't get hurt so much by injuries at the start of the year, they'd be a lot better. Um, obviously, I don't want to spend a lot of time on the Leafs, but yeah, I think Dave Nonis needs to be fired. I 
maybe you just have to rebuild. Not full rebuild, but definitely change it up. They took, in the book, Burke area, they took a big risk by getting Phil Kessel. Maybe they need to make an equally big risk in getting rid of Phil Kessel on some younger talent. Would you? Keep, I think there's three, in my mind, three untouchables. Who are those? Morgan Riley. Um, William Nylander. And I might get... Ooh, I might get picked apart for this, if anyone listens. Jake Gardner. I wouldn't trade Jake Gardner. I wouldn't sure, he it. makes mistakes, but you can, you can teach... Yeah, him he how can, to know. the the things that he is good at you can't teach that no exactly he's, so, he's like he reminds me of Mark Streit when he first came in the league where it's like where defense wasn't working out so great so Montreal put him on as a forward in certain situations yeah. and talk about you we always talk about buff buff yeah big buff and his versatility Jake but Gardner sure he doesn't have size but he's a burner he carries a puck all the time yeah. him and like Riley unbelievable um, it's kind of the way I thought about this because I was shoveling snow the other day. Because we live in Winnipeg. Because we live in Winnipeg. Even though the snow hasn't been too bad. No, but I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know what? If I were to build a team, what you need, in my opinion, is you need two top six forwards to start a build. Two top six forwards. Um, a, a bottom six cornerstone guy to kind of work with. And two D and a goalie. So, theoretically, you could have this might be boring to some people, but you could have Kadri, Nylander. You could keep Peter Holland because he's young enough. To be then, a bottom. To be a bottom guy. Okay. Um, like your third line center. Even Komarov can stay there, okay. even though I think that he might be on the move. Um, Uncle Leo. Then your top two defensive pairings start with one's Morgan Riley, blank. The other one's Jake Gardner, blank. And you have Stuart Percy and Corbinian Holzer that are there, and I think Stuart Percy's ready to move up. They're also talking to Cody Franzen about contract extension, if they can get that. The biggest problem for the Leafs is, during the Nonus era, they've signed some pretty bad contracts with David Clarkson and Stefan Robida, and I'm not... I really hope they don't sign Bernier. To me, he has not proven he's the number one goalie. And everyone I, seems to forget, we were talking about this like over the weekend, James Reimer carried that team. On his back into the playoffs, like dragged them <laughs> into the playoffs. If you and yet everyone seems to forget that he did that. Oh, because oh. Bernier won a cup as a backup. Yeah, and then he came here praised to, to be like, oh, we have. They when when they brought Bernier in, they thought, oh, one A one B, and now all of a sudden it's Bernier's the best. Reimer sucks. Same same mentality in Winnipeg. Yeah, with like, oh my yeah. God, Hutch. Hutch is putting up a little better numbers than Pav, like. Pavlik's do having like a great season, uh, like statistically for his career. But let's hate him because the new guy's here. Yeah, we hate Pavs. It's it's ridiculous, it and is. that's exactly what has happened in Toronto. Yeah. So obviously they have something special, William Nylander, and let's be honest, they've been a terrible drafting team. I I think Nonis has broken that team personally. Um, just. <laughs> You can just look over the two years since they made the playoffs and you can see the moves they've made to, to ruin the team. I don't want to exhaust this. I've talked about it before. Um, whether it's not letting, not signing Clark MacArthur, buying Elker Bosky, or obviously signing the David Clarkson contract, all things that he did wrong. I've been under the strict belief since playing in, I think it was NHL 12, using that MacArthur, Grabowski, Kuhlman line, to me has been my favorite just because they're so much fun to use in that game. And because they I, have they're, everything, they're they have speed, they have grit, they have skill, and they just let Is those that... guys walk. Like if you look at it, the year they went to the playoffs, that was their third line. Their third line this year is what Sam Carrick, and then maybe Michael Sat like Santarelli, then Clarkson. It hasn't gotten better. If anything, it's gotten worse. And what they have, uh, and I heard this earlier, is they don't have a team. They just have a combination of guys. They need to start having a team. And the way you get that is guys who've played together for a long time. So maybe you have to get young talent in. You just have to do it somehow. Whether it's getting rid of guys who who aren't doing it for you. Like maybe, you know what, it sucks, but maybe you have to bite the bull and get rid of Kessel, but get a good return back. Not player for play for not a 80 point score for a he might be good. And one of the teams that's done that recently, in my opinion, and did a great job of it, was Philadelphia when they picked up Jakub Voracek. That was in the Jeff Carter deal. 
Yes. Is it not? No, was it? Hmm? Oh, right, where they sent Jeff Carter, they got Jake Voracek. And first pick, which turned out to be Sean Couturier. Yep. And actually, they, and traded, they traded two cornerstone Jack. guys. And Mike Richards, they traded Mike Richards for Braden Shen and Wayne Simmons. And what a ple- pleasant surprise that the guy who was supposed to be the big guy, Braden Shen, didn't turn out. But yeah. we got one of the best net net uh, front presences in the league in Wayne, Train, yeah. or Wayne Simmons. sorry. And not to be biased or anything, like he's not, he's not that like 70-point guy that people thought he might be. But hey, a guy this who puts up 50, 50 points in his heart and soul of a team, they is love it. it. Look, and everyone buys into the system in Philly. Like, as I said, mentioned earlier yeah. last night, we saw the NHL league leader get hit, clean hit, clean hit. Oh. The reason he got mad was because he had been hit by Scud- Scuderi before in his career, mm-hmm. and it her buckled his knee, and he was oh, out okay. for a bit. And so that's what came up, because... After it was rumblings in the room, so I only heard this from Twitter, but that's why he got mad, because it was a similar hit that put him out for so long, so he's just like, hey, I'm not going to stand for that. To be fair, it was Voracek's second fight, Rob Scuderi first ever fight in like 630 some odd games, or a little more. Rob Scuderi just came back from, or he had an eye surgery recently, or eye injury, so he he left wincing. That's not the point. The point is... <laughs> the, everyone they have a core and they played together for a bit and speaking of like core are we just going to lead right into this yeah let's do um, it well the the core the Ron Hextall wants to change he doesn't want to blow everything up he said there's only five guys that are untouchable and those five guys are obviously Claude Giroux Jake Voracek Wayne Simmons Steve Mason because no one wants that contract <laughs> and, and Sean Couturier yep and everyone else is available yep now would any of those guys would you, would you take any of any of the Remaining guys on Toronto. Braden uh, Shen, Braden would Shen? be a good third? I, he's versatile. He plays on the wing. I, you know what? I would take Braden Shen for his versatility. I think he's a guy that you can work into your bottom six and you could work into your top six for injuries. Which is He's a depth guy, which is what he is. And I'm okay with that. It depends what you give up for him. Um, well, Flyers other are guy, bleeding for defensemen, so send him. Yeah, there, there's probably somebody they could work in. Um... Other than that, I don't really know. Don't really know what Philadelphia has. Okay, well, who's on this? Uh, you were talking earlier about oh, the TSN uh, trade board. Okay, TSN trade, trade bait board. Trade bait. Trade bait board. Trade bait board. Okay, let me see. Let me. Uh, who's on this list? Okay, so I, I don't know if this is all of them, but this is kind of. I think they're top ten. Mm-hmm. Antoine Vermette, Coyotes. Tyler Myers of the Buffalo Sabers. One of the toughest contracts to trade, I think. That's a big one. Yeah, Joffrey Lupo. Jake Gardner, Keith Yandel, Ryan O'Reilly, Yarmer Yager, Curtis Glencross, Zibnick McCulloch. Note on Zibnick McCulloch. He's a defenseman. He's a defenseman for Phoenix. However, what they're saying is uh, he'll only get traded if Phoenix and him cannot reach a contract deal before the deadline. Because mm. they don't want to let him walk for nothing like some teams do with their players. And then Eric Cole, the Dallas Stars. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm seeing is there's 4D available, two centers, two left wings. And one right wing. Okay. That's of the would top you 10. Would you want any of those guys For on your rebuilt team? Toronto team? On your rebuilt Toronto team, would you take any of those guys? For a rebuild? Well, you're saying you Jake want... Jake Gardner. <laughs> okay, well, see, you're keeping Gardner. So take Gardner uh, off that list. Who would you be Ryan willing O'Reilly. to give up? Ryan O'Reilly. Okay, and who do you want to give up? We talked about this already a couple... Last podcast. Last podcast. Would Co- Cody Franzen is the guy you have to? I, I think Cody Franzen. Or the guy. do you, th- or do you offer them for enough but retain salary? Like tw- you might have to. The most I would retain is twenty. I think even say if I was a GM, the most I would ever retain is twenty. But you have to factor in when you're retaining the length of that contract. He's oh, yeah. got this is year one of seven, correct? Yes. So he's got six years left, and you're retaining. He makes seven million a year. Mm-hmm. What's fifteen? What's twenty percent of seven? Money. A lot of money. Money. Okay. Like, what roughly was, a million and a half, let's say. Who's the but, youngest guy on that board? Uh, probably Jake Gardner. And then... No, I'm then just thinking for the Jake Flyers, because Flyers Myers, are making Ryan a Ryan move. Ryan. Flyers are moving. Will. Flyers want picks gonna, and they want prospects. They're going to move someone. Uh, would not surprise me one bit. If, if I, I had to choose, I, I would I do... I would say Shen's top guy. Shen is the... If I had to pick, I'd want Reed. But for any other NHL team, 
they're going for Shen over Reed because yeah. Reed has age. Shen has, d- has Shen, the youth. And Shen has youth. His contract's a lot. You know, they have similar contract. But Reed has been slumping. He hasn't had a great season. He is very, put on the put on the proper line. Twenty goals. He's done it twice Actually, already. One thing I wanted to mention about the untouchables in Philadelphia: mm-hmm. no defensemen. Yeah, flyer de- Flyers never have D. No. And even their D coming up don't know that D. They're all <laughs> offensive defensemen. The only D that are D is Sam Morin. Okay. And they really tried. I talked about it way back when. They tried to keep one of the last cuts because the NHL denied the Flyers of allowing him to sign a contract yeah. because they already had too many NHL contracts. And they tried circumventing it by putting Grossman in the AHL and the AHL, NHL would not allow that. Oh, okay. But if they're going to make a trade, I would say he's one of the few untouchables. Um. Yeah. No. No D because Flyers have never been good at D be- ever since uh, Chris Pronger basically. And okay. They bought him. They don't develop D. They've All- never developed a good defenseman ever. They've always their best defensemen are or traded for. Traded. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Off the board pick. Who do you go with as someone who's guaranteed to get traded, or who you think is going to get traded from the Flyers from any team? Any team. And then say to who for from what? any team. Say to who for what? From any team. Holy smokes. Do you have one in mind so I can, like, think about this? Um, you know what? No, first one that came to mind is Antoine Vermette. He's going to go to a team and sign a contract right away. Okay. Um, who's well, it going to be? Uh, for some stupid reason. I don't know why. I'm thinking Edmonton. I have no idea. You but know does he that's have size? The first, that's the first team that came. No. But that's the Maybe first team Boatker. that came to mind. Maybe even Boatker. I could see Boatker If as Phoenix well. is blowing it up, there's two guys who I don't... Okay, there's three because no one's taken Mike Smith contract. So the other two guys are Max Domi and Ekman Larson. And those are the three guys Ekman I build Larson, around. I don't know. Like, they could move Ekman Larson and get a pretty penny for him. Would you, being Edmonton, just being Edmonton, first pick, and they say, we'll give you Mahalik and Larson for the first, your first pick. Keep in mind, they, are, they already have Pittsburgh's first pick from this year. Edmonton does. So, Which is going to be a, a bottom 10 pick, yeah. realistically. Um, Do you take that? Being Edmonton. I would almost say they would I if I'm Phoenix, sure. Fantastic. It would be great. Or sorry, if I'm Arizona, pardon me. It'd be great to have that. Edmonton won't do it for the simple reason that they'd be two team they'd have two picks in the top four. What do you mean two picks in the top four? Well, Edmonton is picking last. They're picking first, and Arizona's fourth. No, no, last. no, no, no. Edmonton is <sighs> just trading. Their first pick. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Arizona would have the fourth pick and the first pick. Oh, dang. I didn't know. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Ooh, so, oh, oh. if I'm Arizona, that looks great. But you try Edmonton, and go after another piece then from, you go, from Coyotes. You go, no. I could still see the Mahalik and Ekman Larson deal, but... Mahalik? Tra- yeah. Go Bodker. Is it, eh, maybe. Bodker. Okay. Okay, we'll go Bodker and Ekman Larson. No, you know what? Let's twist it. Let's twist it. Oh, Bodker, my God. Bodker, Mahalik, Mahalik, and Yandel. Four first. Oh my god, that's... Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Would you do that being Edmonton? Probably Yakupov as well. But Edmonton You'd have to do first in Yak. Okay, first I'm okay with Yak. that. Yeah. You know, and I think that that would work. Okay. I think... What about you? Who's your guy? The only problem with that trade... Yeah. ...is that's inside division. Only sometimes you gotta bite the bullet. Sometimes, sometimes you gotta put the We're bullet. not GM, so obviously we don't get paid and we can't get fired <laughs> for these decisions. <laughs> But it's true. We just got a phone call like, yeah, you guys got to stop speculating. Just, just stop. Yeah, can you guys stop this? Okay, oh, yeah, is it a trade I want or a trade that I think? Because I want Clark McCarthy. First trade that you think. I want Clark McCarthy on the Jets, but I know it won't happen. How much is left on that contract? Uh, I think he just signed a new one. And it's around four. I doubt. Why would they? Is he on the block? I don't think he's on the block. Okay, fine. Clark McCarthy to Jets. Who are you giving up? Has to be a prospect, being Ottawa. We're rebuild. It's got to be a prospect, a pick, and probably a bottom six player. Or a player. NHL Michael player. Michael Froelich. Just drop my pen. There okay. you go. Froelich. Okay, who's your prospect and who's your pick? No. Oh. Just Froelich. for Froelich. That's it? That's it. Because MacArthur brings you grit and third line already, or what do you... Because MacArthur already has a contract, Froelich does not. You don't... Froelich's an unknown, MacArthur is not. Nice. The other thing, too, is I could see the Jets potentially moving for a leak at the deadline if they can't get a deal done with him. Because they almost once, did it last year. Yeah, because you just, you don't. For they almost how much did it with I, Stewart and for For how much year. I love for a leak, it's tough for him, for us to be like, let's commit, let's commit, let's commit. If he's not willing to do it to us, you know? Yeah. 
Um, and you already know Clark McCarthy is willing to go like to probably another Canadian market because yeah. they've already been to Toronto and so Ottawa. Maybe it's a change of scenery for him. I'd love to keep for a leak, but it's that unknown that you don't want him to walk for free. Okay, That's, I like that. I could see that move, roster player for roster player, not really a rental move, but a guy for a guy. I think they're both, both give a unique set to a team. Okay. But who I think is going to get traded, top guy Mike Santarelli. Where's he going? Um, what team did I hear on Insider Trading yesterday? You know what? A team, a couple teams. Uh, Anaheim could use him as a third line guy if they have room. Rangers could use him. Also, Vancouver. Back to Vancouver. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Make Eichel Finn watch 2015. Yes. Uh, obviously, mid season. Draft ranks have come out. Mm-hmm. Top three are McDavid, Eichel, and Noah, Noah Hannafin. Um, it seems that these three separate from everyone else in the draft. It's just like, if you get the top three pick, you're golden. Everyone you're else, one of these Everyone ones. else is g- good, too. Like, it's supposed to be a really deep draft. However, it's just, you're getting... Head and shoulders. Yeah. It, it's not like you're not getting a blue chip prospect for the other guys, but this is like, you're going in... You're getting a return on your investment right away. Exactly. Because you're already bringing in the hype. Mm-hmm. Which a lot of franchises, namely, oh, who was that? That <laughs> drafted a couple years ago. At the, Edmonton? The, no, yeah. <laughs> you know, no, it's the Islanders I'm thinking. Oh, okay. Remember, like, they had, like, they made Tavares jerseys and they were selling out of Tavares jerseys because they knew he was going to be 91. Like, in his tr- like uh, dryland training sessions, like at at the Islanders practice facility, I That's remember awesome. that a couple of years ago. And it's it's awesome. It's this nice. is the type of guy. These are guys that they put asses into seats, basically. and you can build teams around. And who's it? What are we sitting at? New Jersey, Arizona, Carolina, Buffalo, Edmonton. There you go. So Buffalo, Carolina, Edmonton, Carolina, Buffalo, Edmonton. Yes. Okay, okay. those guys are ready. Um, Oh, just something pretty cool while Greg gets his notes ready. Um, Lake Erie goalie Rito Berra scored a goalie goal. <laughs> Obviously, he's a goalie. Uh, and in a 5-1 win, the 11th What's AHL his goalie, name? Rito Berra. No, no. Any relation to Reto Berra? Him. Reto. Rito Berra. I said that. No, Reto Berra. Reto Berra. That's what I said. Oh, Lake Berra. Erie. Okay, I was thinking... I'm, I said the same. It's potato potato. I was thinking... Um, I, was oh, thinking, yeah. I was thinking Erie Otters. I'll just wrap up with because uh, we touched everything else. Signings: Mark Stahl, six-year extension, thirty-four point two million, five point seven million. I guess we're never going to see the Carolina Stahl brothers together. No, Ken Hitchcock reached six hundred eighty-five wins as a coach, passing Pat Quinn for fifth. Sean Monahan becomes the youngest player in NHL history to reach four career OT goals at twenty years, eighty-nine days. That's incredible, and. Devin Dubnik, first goalie in Wild franchise history, recorded a shutout in his debut. Oh, another guy to score consecutive streak, Jonathan Tavares, six straight seasons with at least twenty goals. The four other in the or the three other guys in the franchise are Brian Trottier, Mike Bossy, and our favorite player Billy Smith. Greg, oh, nice. what are we doing? Okay, so for anyone that doesn't want to listen to this All Star uh, team draft, thank you for listening this week. Some technical. Difficulties. So we are midst in midst of our draft currently. Um, we've picked four players. So whoa, have we picked? Well, technically, well here, let's name the teams here. Okay. First, we flipped the coin. We'll just reenact it. Flip the coin. I took tails. Never fails twice. Greg won the first one, and because we had to draft the assistants and captains. Yeah. Team Greg, or I'm calling him on my paper. Team loser. Greg, who's okay. your team? So under Team Taves. Because we all know Taves loser. is a winner. But Greg what, is a How many loser. cups does he have? Greg two. is a loser. Two cups. Yeah, well, it's fine. Uh, we have Kane, Doughty, Voracek, Tavares. And Cam on Team Scorino, led by Captain Nick Scorino. I drafted the ball there in Ryan Getzlaff. Uh, gone in a flash, Rick Nash. One move blunder as well, I like to call him. And then, of course, I won the inaugural flip. And of course I took Ginger Jesus. But of course... And Greg followed up with... Well, I already said I drafted Greg, Voracek. Greg snaked me and took Voracek. Yeah, I took James. And then I followed up by ripping my jersey off in celebration because I'm wearing right underneath the beautiful man himself. You know what I'm going to say. Filthy Phil. Because yeah. it's what he does. It's what he does. 
if he's you know a guy you need in an all star game, you know he ridiculous? does it all. Go. I just realized. Go. There's both Crosby, Malkin, and Ovechkin on this list. There's an so. incredible bias. And oh, and Stamkos. Greg followed up with Tavares, so it's yeah. my pick now. Yeah, man. it's your pick. It's my pick. And you know what? I mean, nothing would round out my team as much as being anchored on the left circle in the power play by Steven Stamkos. Welcome to the team, Stammer. Welcome. I don't need D. This is an all star game. You know what? I'm going to put Stamkos as my top D. 1D is what I'm putting Stamkos. He's playing number 1D for me. Stammer's on D. Left circle. Next, your draft. You go. Go. Who are you taking? You know what, Cam? I have to get you back for that Phil Kessel. There you go. Shea Weber. No! No! <laughs> oh, I was hoping I could <laughs> yes. Come on! Yes! Uh, I can't, I, I'm you can't okay. have it all. I got greedy. <laughs> I got greedy and he took it. He took it away. You son of a beezy. Uh, no! No! One for Greg, zero for Fine. Cap. You know what? If we're playing this game... Ah, okay, well, this is an all-star game. And you want to go with personality. I'm gonna, I need a guy to anchor this team. Okay. Bobby Labango, goalie. Roberto okay. Luongo. Okay. Okay. Lock it in. Lock it in. Luongo, Cameron, well, G. To follow that up, I'm going to rebirth one of the best defensive pairings... Of all time. Oh, no! And pick Ryan Suter. <laughs> oh, you're actually making a team. Are you drafting a team? This is all-star game. You can't draft a team. How dare you? And you have to have a, three goalies, correct? Yes. Three goalies? Yeah, and Luongo's off the board. Go. Well, uh, hmm, I feel like I should draft a D. Nope. Nope. I'm done doing a carry price. Carry price. I'm thinking carry as well. You know what's great is I'm just going to let you pick the top three, and I'm, I'm going to just go in with mine. Good. Do it. Yep. Do it. Just do it. And we're actually going to have a winner here. We should make a bet, a Slurpee bet. Okay, that's So fine. the way we're going to calculate it is total points, and then we're going to average out... From the, all our guys put from together? all of our guys put together what? in the All-Star game. Oh, like in the game. In the game. Okay. And then okay. we're going to take... Uh, what is it? We're going to take all the goalies, goals against average, and save percentage, average them out, whoever, whoever has a oh, better... Oh, wow, you're going to... This is you. You're doing math. I'll do it. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Deal, I like deal. math. That's it. So you picked Price. I done took Price. Okay. Okay. Next. Um, we're gonna go with Ovechkin. Alexander Ovechkin. Which Ovi. means my first line is Taze Voracek Ovechkin. <laughs> or no, how about this Tavares Ovechkin and Voracek. I got the bald Baron. I got Jero and Filthy. Stammer is my one D. I'm top. <laughs> He's still my top D. Lefty. Lefty. I don't care. I don't care. I'll do it. Who'd you just draft? I gotta scratch him. Ovechkin. Ovechkin. He's at the bottom of the forwards. Okay, yeah, well, you, just uh, you know what? You gotta I'm, start getting D-man. I'm think, I think I'm gonna take my go-to man, Duncan. Duncan Keith. Okay, good pick, good pick. Thank you, sir. Next, you go right ahead, right? You know, I, I want to leave you with some bullshit D. So I'm gonna take Kevin Shatton Kirk. Shatton Kirk. Shatton Kirk. Okay. Shatton Shatton K. Shatton K. There he is. You're taking Shatton Kirk. <sighs> It's about scoring in this, and you guys don't know the the offensive prowess that this guy has. My you don't, top, you don't my have top, anybody in mind, dude. My top D pairing. <laughs> you know what? Let's just let's. I'm going off the board here. You're gonna go off the board. I'm gonna take Andre Kopitar, right D. <laughs> you can't do that. I am. It's an all star game. Actually, I do what I want. How about, <laughs> how about this? Because of that, you're, you have to put Bufflin and Burns as forwards. <laughs> well, Bufflin and Burns. If I draft them, I might just do so, Greg. This is my team. This is an all-star game. Listen to my top five. You don't even compare to my top five. My top five. The ball Baron. You got Ginger Jesus. Yeah, Filthy. I thought, you got Filthy. And then who else you got there? You got Stam of the Hammer, Lefty. And then you got the Slovenian assassin that is Andre Kopitar. And then you know what? You know what? Uh, Bobby Labango's getting a breakaway in this game, too, by the way. I'm just throwing that out there. It's the naked bootleg. The naked bootleg. You just, boop, everyone block. Everybody block. You name your goalie. I don't care. He's scoring. Bobby Labango, he does it all. And you know what Bobby Labango can't do in the first period? The price is right. He'll do it in the second period. Time for you to draft, Greg. You got your head out of the game. Uh, this is my game now. This is for you, Kevin Vladimir Tarasenko. Oh, Tank. Oh, beautiful. You took Tank. Okay, okay. I'm taking legitimate picks. You're actually drafting. Yeah. Dogs. They're agreeing with Greg's drafting. Yeah. Okay. 
Wait, hold on. I gotta see. How many wingers do I... Dude, you know what? I don't even care. You know what? We need someone... We need someone with that offensive prowess, but as a forward. Of course you go to Patrice Bergeron. <laughs> Naturally. Naturally you go to Bergeron, of course. Who is your... Oh, Kopitar was your last pick. Now you have Bergeron? Bergeron. Yep. Next. You go, Greg. Your move. Your move, holy man. Your move. <sighs> gotta take Sagan. Sagan. Okay, Tyler Sagan. I feel like you're drafting too normally, and you know what? <laughs> I'm just drafting all the heart, heart and soul. And no one exemplifies oh. heart more than Zemgis Gergensen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I love it. I love it. This team, Olas, Zemgis Gergensen, Zemgis. I like how you wrote like half the guys what teams you play for. No. And then you just. <laughs> I'm going to name the guys who didn't get the team name beside I'll them. I'll explain to you why. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, no, you I took the list off Sportsnet. Oh, and they, and they were have, voted in. And they don't have the voted in names, so I had to plug those in and then take out the guys who were injured. Okay, you go. Your move. Uh, my next move is going to be none other than Oliver ekman Larson. Ooh, very nice. O-E-L, I believe his name is? Yeah, Ekman. Okay, okay, now I should probably start drafting properly. Um... You sure hmm. you don't want Justin Falk and Eric Johnson to head up your D? Uh, your no, you know what? I'm gonna my second pairing D will be Brent Seabrook and Dennis. Oh, Bush. <laughs> your second defensive pairing, dude. I told you my first defensive <laughs> pairing. It's you, like NHL just all over again. You oh. dang right, it's NHL all uh, over again. Uh, I don't know who to pick next. This team, my team is unreal. You can't stop this team. All heart. My team, no, you know what? New team name, not Scorino. Team Scorino powered by Gumption. Scorino powered by Gumption. This is the name of my it. team. I don't get it. It's an all-star game. You need some class. You need some sass. Go and get it. Greg, make your draft. Let's do this. You're running out of time. Ryan Johansson. Oh, no! How dare you! Rijo. All right. Rijo. You take Rijo. Yep. Just uh, good. Boom. You know what? My third pairing <laughs> of D will be anchored by none other than Justin Falk. The man does it all. <laughs> the, man, the, man, the man does it all, guys. Your move. Your move, Gregory. Go. You, I have my team pick. Like, you don't even know. I, I, you know what? Mm-hmm. Go. I, you know I'm going to pick my last defense one. Okay. I'm just going to do it right now. You have six, Dio? I already have five. Okay, this I is six. Five. Okay. This will be number six. Okay. We're going to go for Norris Candidate. <laughs> I know you're going to this. Dustin Bufflin. Buff. <laughs> okay, I'm okay with the buff. Buff. Who can also play forward if I want to drop a Vetchkin back to defense. Okay. Um. Now, to, oh wait, Greg... My forwards are playing D, so there's going to be guys left off this list then. Because my top, my top D pairing is Stamkos and... No. Uh, why don't you have Jason, Justin Falk on where your forward? Is and Kopi. What's that? No, why don't you have Falk play forward? No, then? no, you just let me decide. <laughs> you let me decide where I go with my team, sir. Okay? Um, I just... Oh, you took Buff, so i got to take someone else, eh? Well, I guess I will take... Mark Giordano, okay. Geo third pairing, Geo third three D. So just to give everyone a heads up on how my team is doing, <laughs> my top D pairing, my top D pairing is, see, uh, Steven Stamkos and Andre Kopitar. My second D pairing right here is of course the tandem. They've gone to two cups together now, almost three. They could have had Keith and Seabrook, okay. and it rounded out with Justin Falk and Mark. <laughs> Oh, Mark Giordano. The Heo Geo. The Heo Geo. Mark Giordano. So, still left over Eric Johnson and Brent Burns to play forward for your team. No. No. You're, they will play forward on your team. Maybe. I don't care if they play forward on my My team is Team Scorino powered by Gumption. I don't know what your team is, but my team is unbelievable. Next draft pick, Gregory. Sergei Bobrovsky. Sergei Bobrovsky. That's your first goalie, is it not? Yes. Well, welcome. I'm going to round up. Well, with your pick of Bro Bobrovsky... I am going to go off the board. And now, this guy has been known to be a little, a little crazy at times. And you know what? This guy's going to anchor my third center, Andre Fleury. Andre Fleury is my third center. Yeah. What? 
Mark Andre Fleury is my third center. <laughs> I can do whatever I want. Please pick Eric Johnson as one of your goaltenders. <laughs> I might, I might have to. I'm running out of picks here. Go. Okay. Uh, with that in mind, I'm gonna pick a guy who does not deserve to be in, in this All Star game. Very rude. Are you gonna go, old man? I'm going old man Ilyash. Old man Ilyash. All right, old man, daddy. Oh my goodness, I'm running out of space <laughs> on my page. My writing's so big. Okay, well now, see, here's the thing. You like, can't. Mine compared to yours. You can't. Yeah, <laughs> I well, write like I'm a normal excited. person. I get excited over these things. Now, this guy <laughs> and his his defensive abilities, like his power, just raw power in the corners. I don't think I've ever seen him lose a puck battle. Okay. That man is RNH. Ryan Johansson will be on his off wing oh. with, of course, Mark Andre Fleury. <laughs> what? RNH and Adrian Fleury are like, when you think of third line. Why did you say Johansson then? Oh, did I say Ryan yeah. Johansson? Oh, I meant RNH Nuge. Nuge and Hopkins. Ryan Nuge and Hopkins. Because okay. <laughs> when you think scoring, you think Mark Andre Fleury and Ryan Nuge and Hopkins. No! When I think of grinders, I think of all those guys. When I think of grinders. Because if you want to win the All Star game, you need grinders. Scorino powered by Gumption. This is my team. This is. When you think of Gumption. You think of R and H, and you think <laughs> of Mark Andre Fleury, and that this is it, Greg. You don't know how to do All Star like I know how to do All Star. Go, oh. <laughs> your move, your move, Holy Man. Uh, we'll pick Bobby Ryan. Bobby Ryan. Okay. Okay. There's only a handful of players left. It is okay. Um. <sighs> you know what? I'm stuck in a corner. I don't think there's only two goalies left, and that's not fair of me oh to God. assume, to assume yeah. that you would. I can't just say you take these goalies. So you know what? I mean, when you think of guys who block shots a lot, you naturally rat them. We'll be my third goalie in the third period. Verbata. Verbata will play goalie. Third string in the period. Third period. Okay. I'll Next. Pick, I'll pick Yaroslav Halak. You take Halak? Yeah. Craig, you don't know how to draft. You know how to draft. You're, like, don't you're know clearly how to draft. out out of your realm here. <sighs> there's not a lot of offensive <laughs> offensive guys left. No. Now, because no. there's not a lot of offense, you have to go to the guy that is the most offensive on this team. Now you're going to need an anchor winger on that fourth line. That guy's going to be Eric Johnson for you. That'll be Eric Johnson. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 4F. I'm gonna, I have to write my team out on paper properly and show you what this team looked like. This is ridiculous. My team is so good. Greg, who are you drafting next? Who are you drafting? Are you okay, Greg? Are you going to die on me? Um... Gonna pick Tyler Johnson. Tyler Johnson, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. T Johnny. Just writing T Johnny on my paper. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Greg. Okay, I have my D set. <laughs> <laughs> I have my goalie set. I need some more forwards, do I not? Yeah, I think there's one guy. They call no, him no. the caveman. At times. They call him a caveman. He's got quite a quite a selection of reptiles. He's versatile. You move him up and down the lineup. That man is Brent Burns. Okay. Of course I take of Brent course. Burns. Yeah. So I'm gonna take rocker concert goer himself. Corey Crawford. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Did yeah. you want to say that? No, what okay, thanks. Thanks, sir, Kanye. Stealing my thunder. Stealing Fuck your you. thunder. Ah. Yeah. Okay, so there's only two players left. No, I don't want either of these guys. Let you me tell what? you. Who Greg, you we're going to flip a coin. No, no, flip, we're flipping a coin. Flip you pick. No, yeah, you pick. No, how about we address heads, tails? Who okay, to? now, no one wants these guys on their team. No, these guys exactly. Don't, these guys, you can't build around these guys. No, not at all. <laughs> not Clearly. And these guys are number 87. And 71. And. Of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah, no one wants these Crosby. guys. Crosby. And Malkin. Okay. Gino. So Sid the Kid. Tails. Malkin. Because he fails, obviously, naturally. And heads for Crosby. Because he turns them a lot. No, because he has brain damage. Wow, Greg. <laughs> that was rude. I like your gumption. Totally you, could, you could join turn Team Scorino Power by oh, yeah? gumption if you'd like. Okay. Yes. Okay, so. Wait, who gets you? 
I'll let you pick because you've picked every other time. I've picked every other time. Okay. So, heads, Crosby, tails, Malkin. Go. Yeah. Okay. So, I get, I get the result of you this. You get the you result get, of You this. get the remainder. Yep. Tails, I get Malkin. Oh, no! So, I got Crosby. You have Giroux and Crosby on the same team. Yeah. And now this team is super powered by... Superpower gumption because <laughs> I'm gonna have a brawl on my bench. They hate each other. They fight. You know, what? You know how you solve that? Here? How do you fight that? You put Crosby in net instead of Carey Price. Instead and you of Carey Price? Price be your first line. I like center. your style. I'm doing it. Making the trade. <laughs> it has been traded. No, two to second goalie is Crosby. Second G, Sidney Crosby, Carey Price will be the second line center now. Second line center, Carey Price. You guys, you guys. Team scoring are powered by major super gumption. Will be the champs of this all-star festivity weekend. Now, we're only factoring in the all-star game now. So let's no. give them a breakdown. Are we going to... Yeah, only like the all-star game, right? The yeah. points. So you're going to break it down. And then the loser buys the winner of Slurpee for next, yeah. next podcast. Mm -hmm. And then we'll toss, in, we'll toss in Dan one, too. He'll get one, too, I guess. Maybe. No. Well, all you right, contract this How about this? Mm -hmm. How about this? Daniel... You tell us what Cam's team name is, and you get a Slurpee next podcast. Oh, wow. I'm putting Danny on the spot here. Yeah, but okay. here's the problem. No one's going to remember that. What is it? Super gay, awesome, here, powered I'll say, by gumption? Oh, I'm not even going to say it again. <laughs> not gay. Don't you use that three-letter slang. That is not appropriate here. It means happy. Oh. Yeah, okay. Okay. It's true. Yeah. It's true. It does mean happy. You want me to say you're one more time? You're very happy about it. You want me to? I'm you're, Jeff. My team is unreal. All you're doing is being extremely happy. That's it's why true. I said it. That's a scary word now. It yeah. is a it very is. scary word. Whew. Why do we have words in our culture I, that I are don't so know. scary? I've had so much fun today, Greg. I have too. <laughs> Dan, Dan, you're not welcome back. Never. Yeah. We're trading you and your rights to where things go to die. Okay. That's you want to, You want to tell everyone what your team is? Yep. List them, list them from top to bottom. Okay. Team... Oh, no team. I can't. That's a quiz now. Yeah, nice. Nice. You almost got me. Captain Nick Scorino, followed by Ryan Getzlaff, Rick Nash, Claude Giroux, Phil Kessel, number one defenseman, Steven Samkos, top goalie, Bobby Labango, Roberto Luongo, uh, second line center, Carey Price, third line defenseman, Duncan Keith, also right-handed shot. I don't think he's right-handed shot. I don't care. <laughs> Kopitar. Andre Kopitar. He's I don't care. I don't care. He's I right for the All-Star game. He's You're right for the right. I know. <laughs> they're they're going to feed each other Stammer and Kopi on the points. Okay? Stammer and Kopi. Follow up by... Opposite hands. Yeah. They're going to win every board, but... Uh, Patrice Bergeron. Zemgis Gergens. Hans. And then uh, we got Brent Seabrook. Justin Falk. Mark Giordano. Third center. <laughs> Mark Andre Fleury. RNH. We got... Third string goalie, Radom Verbata. You got Eric Johnson playing forward. You got Brunt Burns helping him out on forward. And we got Sidney Crosby, second string goalie. Greg, let the people know at home who your team is. So, Team Taves, in other words, Team Loser that wins everything. How? Oh, you didn't what? draft How many awards does Taves have? Yeah, that's right. That's what I thought. Oh, well, that's if we're thought. going off awards. What does Felino have? Oh, that's right. Okay. Just put that one out there. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. I so see. I have Taves, Kane, Kane Doughty, Cam's favorite player. Jake the Snake. Jake Score a check. Score a check. Tavares, the best defensive pairing you can have of Weber and Suter. Ovechkin. Shattenkirk. Shattenkirk. Tarasenko. Tyler Sagan. Because, you know, I felt that, like, a Leaf fan should have the joy of having him on his team once in a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so depressing. It hurts. Oliver Ekman Larson. Wait, what's that song? It's like Ryan it's like, Johansson. Hey, oh. You don't know what it's like <laughs> to be the sad man. Sorry, to be the bad man, man. behind <laughs> blue eyes. No one knows. Uh, where was I? Oliver Ryan Johansson. Okay. Uh, Dustin Bufuglian. Sergey Bobrovsky. Patrick Ilyash. Bobby Ryan. Yaroslav Halak, Tyler Johnson, T. Corey Johnny? Crawford, and Evgeny Malkin. Oh, and you got Malkin. Yeah. However, little stipulation, he was scratched today. If he's injured, I get his replacement. Guess is who his replacement might be. I don't know. Is it really? Datsuki and Daniels? Why, 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 
Why wouldn't the pity party of the NHL put... Okay, Greg, we're put, make, let Detroit have a representative. And okay, put well, I'm going to give you... Now, if that happens... Yeah. Corey Crawford is your third line center. Pavel Datsyuk's your goalie. I'm sorry. You have to do it naturally. Yep. Naturally. Naturally. Now, Greg and I, this is what we're going to do to make this even up. I'll get Greg with... Ooh, he's got bad rating too. Whatever. I'll write it out. I'll write out the, the, my team and tweet it from the account. And I'll let Greg write on a piece of paper, like, line one, like, left, center, right. So you see it visually, what this... We'll put it in your notes. What this Fandango team is over here. What is this? I don't know what I've created, but I kind of like it. I kind of like it. <laughs> yeah, no complaints. Okay, so... <laughs> my jaw hurts. My face hurts. <laughs> my face hurts from laughing. Yeah, it does. It's ridiculous. All right, so thanks for listening this week. All you non-lame people who stuck around for this part of the podcast, this very special edition. Uh, next week we'll be back to normal. Hopefully shorter Jets... Uh, breakdowns. No, not just shorter, but shorter in general. But this was a fun yeah, one. This, this only fun. comes around once a year, so we took yeah, advantage of it. Exactly. We, mm-hmm. you know, we, we we took full advantage of it. It's like that drunk girl at the bar. You just take advantage. Oh, uh, Greg, you want to say that one more time, please, <laughs> no, sir? No, no. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> you don't take advantage of her. I don't. That is a crime. No. Even when girls are drunk, they still say no to me. That's, okay, now, okay, this has got to end. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Don't, we're going to go talk to some people.